Hey, it's Diamond Dish with D. That's me. Thank you for clicking on this video, making yourself a priority. I am Denise. It is What's D Cooking slash Meal Prep Day. It's just some of the things I put together this week and thought I'd share them with you in one quick little video. We have some good ones here, my lovelies. We also, we have, get this straight, the TikTok Cottage Cheese Pancakes made into a mini loaf. Thanks to Kara. We have something I saw on Instagram that was, um, they crushed up a Weebix biscuit and soaked it and then made a cheesecake topping. We did a little bit better than that. We used it, our miracle banana bread and made a quaint little cake. And there was, oh, I have Cinco de Mayo party. I made a Southwest hummus, topped with a little bit of pico. We have that here as well. So buckle up, enjoy the recipes. If you enjoy this video, let me know with a thumbs up. Welcome to all my lovely new subscribers. Welcome to the returning subscribers. I appreciate when you come and watch my videos. It warms my little heart. So enjoy this video. And let's get to that food footage. Let's do the TikTok cottage cheese pancake and oats, oats pancakes, D style in a loaf pan. Thanks to my girl Kara for inspiring this one. In my bowl, I have a quarter cup and I'm using quick oats because I'm not going to blend it. I want them to be more like flour, so I'm using quick oats. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of baking powder. Sorry about the reach. Dash of salt. And we want cinnamon. I'm trying to decide. Hmm, I'm going to say no to the cinnamon. I want it to be more cheesecake. I mean that would replicate a little bit of crust though, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stick to just putting some cinnamon toast crunch dust on top. I'm gonna put a packet of sweetener. I don't want it too sweet, so I figure a packet will be plenty because we're gonna top it with some syrup. Quarter cup of cottage cheese. I'm using just regular old, this is one percent cottage cheese. You could use fat free, you can use whatever you want. I'm sure it's all going to work. A little dash of vanilla extract. I shouldn't say a dash, I should say about, about half a teaspoon. This is my homemade vanilla. Now I'm going to use liquid egg whites because I have them, but you could use an egg if you have it. This is actually egg substitute. Two tablespoons. And we're just going to combine well. It's kind of like the miracle loaf, but we have cottage cheese in there. I'm going to smash those curds, feel free. It's a little bit denser than the pancake batter because we didn't blend it. And you could go up to half cup on everything if you want to make it bigger, but I am choosing to make something a little bit smaller. Grab our loaf pan. Let's spray it with some nonstick spray. Grab my butter when I have a butter nonstick spray that I like to use for these occasions. All right, let's just dump it in. It reminds me of the Grace's oat bread. If you've ever made that before, which is really good. So we're just gonna bake this. I have my oven preheated to, I guess, 375. I'm not sure how long this is gonna bake. I'm gonna put it on for like some of that cinnamon toast dust. I'm gonna put it on for probably about, I'll say 15 minutes and I'll check it. But I'll let you know when we come back how long she actually baked. 
she baked for 20 minutes. There she is. I'm gonna let her cool in here for a few and then I'm gonna pop her out and we're gonna have a bite or two. All right, she came out of the pan. She's not pretty. Maybe if I'd have waited, she'd have came out a little bit better. I'm not sure, but you know what? I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix that. Grab some strawberries and just slice them. These are local Jersey strawberries. So, I'm just gonna hide it. <laughs> and honestly, it's your breakfast. I don't think we really care how it looks. We really, really care how it tastes. All right, somebody here waiting for a strawberry. Let's give him a piece. Come here. Sit, beg. <laughs> yeah, we don't let Bailey go without his strawberry. So, there you go. And I can top it with some syrup. You don't have to, you could, you know, it's probably good on its own. We should taste it before we talk about syrup though, right? Right. All right, let's taste. Like I said, I did go down for a little bit less, but you can go to the half cup of everything. It's good. I like the texture. See the texture to me? I'm gonna show you. With the quick oats, it's not quite as oaty. So if you're a person that doesn't want to blend it, try using quick oats. It's a little bit of a better, you know, cut for you. I'm really going to enjoy this. With some. I just saw an Instagram post where I think it was a WW coach posted this recipe where she crumpled up, I think it was Weebix biscuits of some sort, and then doused them in milk and then topped it with yogurt. That grossed me out a bit, I'm not going to lie. Um, and she said it wasn't good. It was soggy. So I thought to myself, self, what would you do? What would Dee do? And I'm looking at that. Well, she wouldn't use Weebix, that's for sure. But she would use her miracle bread. So why don't we make a miracle bread? One, one recipe, put it in two loaf pans so it's thinner. And then top it with a progurt combination. What do you think? I think that sounds delicious. So I thought, yeah, you know, what would Dee do? This is what she'd do. Let's get to doing it. All right, got our very ripe banana. But I like the concept of that idea. I just don't care for Weeblix. I care for oats. Now you could just do like an overnight oats base, but I don't want, I want it to be somewhat, um, a little backbone to it. So I think this banana bread will serve that purpose. And making it in thin form is going to maybe make it a little bit crispier. Well, that's, that's, that's what I'm going for. But you know what? If you don't like banana, you could use pumpkin, you could use applesauce, whatever floats your boat. You could do the cream of wheat loaf if you wanted. That would be really good too. I'm thinking should we do chocolate. I'm thinking about chocolate with a vanilla prover bowl. Oh yeah. See, this is how it happens. You're witnessing what I do. Now I'm not gonna put any baking soda powder in this because I don't want it to have fluffiness. I want it to be dense. But yes, we're going to make it chocolate. Okay, chocolate, salt, and some vanilla. Some vanilla, oh, I should shake it, because this is my homemade vanilla with the beans. So we just wanna get those beans floating around. Just a little drop. Oop, there we go. And a little egg, of course. I think I need a sweetener though. I wasn't going to use a sweetener, but I think because I'm using the cocoa powder, I might need one. I was going to use this packet, but I think I want any more. So I'm going to put two tablespoons 
of egg whites, egg substitute. I have it, so I'm gonna use it. And let's get our quarter cup oats in there. And I need to grab my monk fruit because I think I'm gonna need it. oven is also preheating in case you didn't know. So I'm just going to grab. I'm just going to put a tablespoon to counteract that cocoa. And that's all she wrote. And that's all she wrote. Let me get that combined because I'm thinking chocolate and the vanilla progurt, which is just yogurt mixed with protein, would be delicious. And I did use a quick oats because I wanted it to be more not as oaty as I like to like English I like to use. It's not as oaty. And I'm not putting the baking powder because I don't want it to rise or anything. So I think maybe that might help deter that. All right. We have our two dishes. Let's clear some of this out. Okay. Put the lid back on this so it doesn't fall because that's what's gonna happen. All right. I always spray so they come out. We're going to see if we can evenly get this in our thing. Okay. Let's do the best we can. Doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, if I guess how much was in here, maybe we should do a half cup. You know, why don't we put it in our half cup? Why do I measure for a change? That would be an interesting concept. That I would measure, right? I'm going to venture to say a half cup. So we're just going to grab a spoon. Door number one. And now we will measure this one again because we want it to be even. Are you even here? I think I did good because that one was just shy of a half cup and this is all right i mean you could make it and cut it in half and then toast it but i just try to avoid the toaster i just want to get this all right we're going to bake it i'm guessing maybe 12 13 minutes because it's usually 25 so we'll see i'll let you know when we come back all right, I just took them out of the oven. You can see they're still steaming. They cooked for, let me think, I had to put 17 minutes. And see, they're thin. I wanted them to be thin because I don't want too much bread to yogurt. So that is, they're gonna cool completely. And then when we'll come back, we're gonna revisit when we build it. So these are gonna cool, and then we're going to build our cheesecake on top of our oat bread. I know, it sounds amazing, doesn't it? Oh, I'm hoping it's good. Let's prepare our filling for our little cheesecake. So here I have about a half a cup of non-fat Greek yogurt, all I had left. Now I could open my new one. Um, I, I mean, this could be enough, it could, but what I'm gonna do, because it's me, I have a tablespoon of cottage cheese I'm gonna throw in there, just to amp up the cheese. Again, it's not adding anything. It's a tablespoon of cottage cheese. You know, it's just gonna give me what I'm looking for. And I'm also gonna put a teaspoon of, I keep mine in this little Tupperware container, 
of cheesecake sugar-free pudding because I don't go through a lot of it because I'm using it a teaspoon at a time. Now, do we want to sweeten it? Hmm, I'm thinking we do. So I'm going to put a packet of sweetener in there. Again, you don't have to if you don't want to. But that's just what I'm going for. A sweet cheesecake. Now, I've seen I'm putting a little bit of vanilla in there. Just a dab. Not even a, not even a full teaspoon. I just want to measure it so I can get it there easily. Okay, just a little bit. It was just not even basically a quarter of a teaspoon of that. I'm just going to mix that all together. And that pudding mix does its thing. Look how thick this has gotten already. Plus, you've got that cottage cheese in there. Look, it's like, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's grab our bottom. This over here. Put this over here. Grab a plate. And we're going to grab one of our little cakes that we baked. Again, you could do this the night before if you really wanted it to sink in. That's totally up to you. But I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a dense cake. So we're going to put that down. Now, if you wanted to like infuse it with some skinny syrup flavor, you might want to do that. That'd be perfectly within your right. And if you really want to use all cottage cheese too, that would be really good as well. You say, hey, do you want to use cottage cheese? Hey, I think that'd be fantastic. You want to whip it? You don't want to whip it? That's up to you. So we're just going to pile this on top. I mean, it's not even... <laughs> Your cake is one point, your topping technically is zero, but we could get... <laughs> Sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes I just come up with these things and they just, you know, you get inspired by something you see and you just kind of make it your own. I mean, seriously, two point breakfast? I'm all... And I'm giving you two points. I don't even think it is two points, technically. So I need my, it's right here. My snicker dust. It's a quarter teaspoon we can put on. And I do measure that because yeah, I'm like, I can go a little bit crazy with that, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, I definitely definitely measure. And half the time I don't even use all of it. There we go. So you cut that. You didn't even need all of it. I put that back. So there is our cheesecake breakfast yeah i mean the girl she did with those you know biscuits but i'm all about the oats oats are fantastic so this is my two point cheesecake with a crust i mean i don't know what more else to say but let's have a taste right i think we should but i gotta get a few pictures first and then we will have ourselves a taste so what I did, I combined my two favorite things on WW, oats and yogurt. The two things I never ate much of before, but I did add some strawberries. Oops, I'm so excited. Look at that, chocolate. You could put peanut butter in there, in your yogurt. That's really good. I mean, I don't know if I would do it the night before because I like the textural difference of the firm cake and the creamy pudding, cheesecake, cottage cheese, yogurtish deliciousness. Like I said, it's the miracle bread with chocolate, cocoa powder, Divide it in two. I mean, you can make it one and cut it in half. I just wanted it to be really firm. So I thought if I cut, if I cut it, if I bake it in two half, you know, pans, supposed to one big one, <clears throat> it would bake better for me. So that's what I did. And again, you know, that recipe is two points. So half of that is one point. And this topping is really nothing. 
but I will give it a point just because that's what I hear people say. They surely give it a point. So, but still two points for this breakfast. High in protein. Shut the front door. I'm going to go enjoy this. So you're welcome. And thanks for the inspiration from WW. They post on their Instagram page and theirs did not look as good as this. So winner, winner, you're welcome. All right, I'm going to prepare one of my um, little appetizers for our Cinco de Mayo winery. And I'm making my hummus. Now, I've made my hummus a million times here on the channel. I don't want to go through the whole thing, but I'm just going to show you. I'm doing the hummus as I usually do. I'm doing two cans of chickpeas. I'm going to puree them a little bit. And then we're going to add the rest of the seasonings. So I'm going to puree them. Maybe I'll show you what I add. There we have. I have broken up the chickpeas in a couple cycles just to get them loosened up and start pureeing. It just helps. So that is that, and we're gonna show you the spice blend that we're putting in there. I have a heaping tablespoon of garlic. I have a tablespoon of dried cilantro and this chili lime blend from Chaser Joe's. I figured that sounds Southwestish to me. And I have a heaping half cup of non-fat Greek yogurt. I'm gonna put all that in with the chickpeas, maybe with a little bit of water, and we're gonna blend some more. So there I added everything. And I did put two tablespoons of water to help with the processing. And we're just gonna puree it and get it to a nice smooth consistency. I'm gonna throw about two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, a tablespoon of avocado oil, and a squirt of this chipotle paste. Thank you, Lori Mashmer. In there just to give it more Southwest and this brightens any hummus and olive oil just makes it a little bit more smoother. So we're just gonna add those in next and continue to puree. I tasted and adjusted, needed some salt. So I added some salt and it's exactly what I wanted. It's a very Southwest smoky taste, exactly what I was going for. So I'm gonna put it in a bowl, I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then I'll explain how I'm gonna to top it. So here we have, here we, here we <laughs> like duh, I'm keeping that in. Here we have our homemade hummus all ready to go. It, you can see the flex, it looks a little orange with the chipotle, the flex of green from the cilantro and the chili lime. So it definitely has a Southwest vibe, exactly what I wanted because it's Southwest. So I'm gonna leave it like this, I'm gonna to top it, but when we go to serve it tomorrow, I'm gonna to top it with this Sam's Fresh Salsa. Now it's more like a pico, if you can see that it's very, I just wanna make my own, I mean, you could actually make your own, but I love the small dice that this has. And I thought, you know what, I can't chop that small. I, mean, I guess maybe if you use some kind of special chopper, I don't know, but I, think that would be so good on top of this served with I have cucumbers I have carrot chips I have little mini bell peppers and celery and of course we have regular chips as well but I'm going to top tomorrow I'm going to top it when we go to eat it if I remember to take a picture of it and insert it I will so you guys can see what it looks like but like I said it's basically the basic hummus recipe just adding the spices you know I, I do the yogurt I do the water I do the lemon juice and the garlic that's always standard but i don't always do the chipotle or the chili lime so that kind of you know in the cilantro gives a little bit of something different you know we may even if you wanted you do this while we're here i have some more dried cilantro just to give it a little yeah you know, it's a little bit special so well, there it is again basic basic hummus that you could and all my hummuses always start with this base i mean i've added spinach to hummus i've added broccoli to hummus i've added beets to hummus base recipe just adding a little something something so that is it for my cinco tomorrow we go to the winery so i thought i'd just share that here with you again the points are very low the only thing i have to count is that what almost a tablespoon of, of avocado oil what is that four points for this whole bowl <laughs> i mean you know you could have a serving a nice serving you can call it a point if you feel better you know i do still have more in the container this isn't all of it this is most of it i'm going to put a little container aside for peter because he likes my hummus so yeah i don't buy hummus anymore i make it it's so easy to it comes together with a food processor in minutes and you could definitely you know you need some chickpeas your base is chickpeas garlic yogurt lemon juice and water the water just helps it thin out even if you, you know what you can leave out the olive oil or the oil if you think it's too much but it's i just think it's a nice consistency so that is it i will insert this picture 
after this clip. So that is it. Well, what do you think of those? I thank you again for watching. I will have things on dishwithd.com that, that for, for definitely for the um, cheesecake one. I think I'll put that on there. But everything is, I know my hummuses are everywhere. So it's kind of like just adding different spices for the hummus. It's very easy to do. I think you should have a problem with that. And the TikTok cottage cheese pancakes are already on there. You just have to put a mini loaf pan. I did it. You can do a third cup or half cup either way whatever you points you want to spend you spend them and that's how you do it. you just adjust your baking time always check your oven do the toothpick method to see if it's done that always works for me so again if you enjoy these video these recipes give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button join us here at dish with d we got some fun fun food this is the fun food channel so i will talk to you and dish with you another day have a great rest of your day. If you always notice, there's always videos linked at the end of these videos. If everyone has need something to watch, I will put a few old ones there. Or is it there? It's one of those sides. But thanks for watching.